January 23rd, 2018. This will be part six in the series of how to set up a Raspberry Pi to monitor greenhouse temperatures and ultimately control things. Uh, of course, you could also adapt this to any other uh, building or heating system, uh, including furnaces, etc., etc. Uh, so that said, uh, we'll just jump in real quick here. Uh, one thing I want to note is uh, the whole purpose of all this is so that you can collect data to a database and then uh, be able to display that on charts like this rather than just access the data live. You'd be able to record a history and you'd be able to go back and chart that history and do any other sort of uh, sorting or data analysis that you want to do later on. So we're setting up uh, MySQL, MyPHP admin, and Apache web server. Uh, this whole package will work to collect data to the database, display it out to a web page, and that sort of thing. Uh, that said, uh, you're going to need to log into uh, your Raspberry Pi through Secure Shell. Um, we covered that in a previous video. Uh, the first thing you want to do is uh, sudo su and that'll put you uh, as uh, root administrative mode for uh, this um, install. There is a tutorial uh, that I got this information from. Uh, I will drop that link in the description as well. You can see that uh, link right here. Um, I just want to say <laughs> Uh, I went through a lot of different tries and a lot of different quote-unquote tutorials trying to install uh, this package and I found a lot of them had errors and issues and problems so uh, I did manage to find a complete um, clear and concise tutorial and so that's what I'm basing this information off of so thanks to the person who runs pymylifeup.com uh, that was an excellent write-up and uh, the only one that actually worked uh, I remember going through this when I initially set these up and uh, I remember it being kind of a struggle and, but anyway here we are we're gonna get right started so your first command once you've uh, logged in as admin is sudo apt-get install mysql server so we're gonna go ahead and go through that uh, you can copy and paste that and uh, the paste all you gotta do is right click and it'll paste it right in uh, you'll notice it comes up and asks you if you actually want to do that, and it tells you we'll be, in my case, we'll be using an additional 87 megabytes of space. Uh, say yes to that. And it'll ask you for a MySQL password for the user root. You want to give it a password. Uh, you should definitely write this down somewhere or memorize it, um, whatever it takes for you to not forget your password, because if you lose it, you might not be able to restore it or recover it. Uh, it'll ask you to repeat the password, so go ahead and do that. And uh, you can just hit enter as OK. You'll notice that it's uh, pre configuring the patch it, packages and unpacking, and it's going to start the install here shortly. Uh, while that's processing triggers, I think we'll just go over here and take a look. This is the web page displayed from my Pi in the greenhouse, um, and you'll notice it's displaying quite a volume of data. This isn't all of the data that I'm collecting, but it's everything I wanted available heads up in a web page. And I've set this web page up. This is a PHP based web page. And I've set this up to grab the data from the database and post it to the web page in this chart format. Um, I plan to add uh, uh, like graphing type charts to this later on, but that requires the use of JavaScript, and I'm not all that familiar. so. Uh, that will be a section that we'll add to this series later on. For now, just note that uh, you can grab, collect, and display quite a volume of data on a web page. And I've set this page up to auto refresh every one minute, so it's up to the date because my Pi is set to collect the data every minute. Um, and I've set a limit on it of 1440 minutes or one day. So I can go back as far as one day ago and look at what the uh, what the data is. Um, so that's just kind of an example of one of the things that you can do with this um, just to help you understand wh what uh, what we're installing right now, what all that supports. Um, so with that we'll go back here and uh, looks like we just finished the install. Uh, the next command is uh, sudo mysql secure installation. This is basically to lock down the SQL installation. Um, 
<clears throat> you'll need to enter the root password that you created a minute ago. Um, we don't want to change the root password, so no. Um, uh, you do want to remove the anonymous users, yes, that's uh, so people don't have access uh, who shouldn't. Um, uh, you should probably disallow root login remotely for now. We can always re-enable that in the future, but for now, for security reasons, I would disable it. You don't want somebody to hack into your Pi and mess it up, especially if you're not super familiar with uh, computer stuff. Um, the database test, uh, you do want to remove that database. Um, it doesn't matter if it's unsuccessful. Um, uh, it was unable to drop the database. It's okay, just skip it and move ahead. Uh, and yes, you do want to reload table privileges now. Okay, so we're done securing the MySQL uh, installation and we're going to move on to the next step here. This is uh, we're gonna. We're actually gonna log in to MySQL. Uh, you'll need that password that you just said a little while ago again. And now we're logged into MySQL. Um, that just shows us that we successfully installed MySQL. And at any time, if you want to quit, you can type quit and hit enter. Um, another way to get out is if you type exit semicolon. Uh, I just want to point out that all MySQL statements need to be finished just like you would finish a sentence with a period. Any MySQL statement needs to be finished with a semicolon. So I'll show you real quick. Oh, well, it actually took it for exit, but uh, typically it would reject that statement. Anyway, uh, so now we're going to go ahead and install uh, MySQL DB. <coughs> so that command is sudo apt-get install python MySQL DB. We're going to go ahead and run that command. Um, shouldn't take too long. Uh, also, please keep in mind this is on a Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, on a Pi 3, this would be even faster. Um, not that this is super slow. All right, so that. Uh, operation completed and now we're going to go back and log into MySQL again you'll need that password that you entered before now we're logged into MySQL and we're going to create a user in MySQL um, as a, a secondary user uh, so we have a way to access and manipulate the database without using the root login for everything so uh, if you take this statement <coughs> excuse me grant all privileges on my db dot star to quote username unquote at localhost identified by password etc basically you can change the username and password to whatever you want but remember you should write down the password and the username so when you go to log into this later on um, to manipulate your database or to make changes or any of that kind of stuff uh, you won't be denied access so for the purpose of this video I'm going to use test for the username and I'm going to use test for the password so you'll notice how I change those uh, to reflect the actual value that I want so uh, you can go ahead and run that statement in MySQL uh, you will notice at the end here uh, that that ends with the semicolon as I mentioned before just go ahead and hit enter and you'll see uh, MySQL come back and say that it granted all privileges to user whatever uh, on, on your local server. It says query OK, zero rows affected, and that's OK. So uh, now we're going to go back and, gonna, well, first thing you want to do is quit. And then we're going to go back and do the next part of this install, which is uh, we're going to install PHP MyAdmin as sudo apt-get install PHP MyAdmin. Uh, again, it'll ask you if you want to uh, continue. Um, you have to say yes, otherwise you won't finish this installation. Okay, so uh, we'll just go over configuring this real quick. Uh, the PHP admin, MyAdmin package must have a database installed to configure before it can be used. This can be optionally handled with dbconfigcommon. In other words, you can manually set this up later on if you want. 
Uh, but we're going to go with the easy way on this as the whole idea is to get you set up and uh, logging data. Uh, so if you're an advanced database administrator, you know that you want to perform this configuration manually. Or if your database has already been installed or configured, you should refuse this option. Uh, details on that information can be found at user share doc php my admin. Otherwise, you should probably choose this option. So we're going to go ahead and configure the database for php my admin uh, with db config common. So say yes to that. Uh, you want to pick a password for the administrative account. Um, basically to access MySQL. Um, so pick a password that you want to use, write it down, and uh, type it in, and use tab and enter to get to tab to get to OK, and enter to execute. Uh, of course, it wants you to uh, give a password for PHP my admin. Uh, I'm sorry, on that previous one, that should be the same password as you entered for MySQL. And this one could be a different one if you chose. Uh, I like to use the same just because that way it's one less password to keep track of or remember. And we're not doing uh, critical web server applications here. So uh, again, you type in your password and you tab to OK, click OK. It asks you to confirm that password. And you tab and hit Enter for OK. And then uh, it wants to figure out what type of web server you're setting up. Uh, we're not going to mess with light HTTPD, uh, and we're not going to mess with Nginx. Uh, I, if there's a lot of requests, I could come back and do uh, an Nginx one, but I'm not all that familiar with that. And Apache is basically the original standard, although Nginx is a little more secure and a little less uh, uh, processor and uh, space hoggy. But Apache is pretty reliable, and I like it. And that's what we're going to use for this tutorial. So uh, use a space bar to select Apache and then tab uh, to go to OK and hit enter. Um, after that we're going to go ahead and edit the etc apache2 apache2.conf file. Uh, dot, dot .conf files in Linux are configuration files. They're uh, they're actually a really nice simple way to configure anything you want to configure. Of course, your syntax has to be correct. Um, so uh, I'll provide all of these links, including the line to add at the bottom of the file when this install finishes, um, so that you can uh, update your uh, apache.conf file and, uh, and have a contiguous operating uh, web package. OK, so we finished uh, the sudo apt-get install php myadmin. And uh, we've got that installed and configured correctly. Now we're going to go on and edit the apache2.conf file. This is a c configuration file. Any, uh, any file you find in Linux, it's .conf is a configuration file. It's a really nice way to manage control of how things work on the system simply by editing one text file or a set of text files, depending on what you're configuring. Anyway, the command is sudo nano slash etc slash apache2 slash apache2.conf. Um, and we'll go ahead and execute that command. You can just copy and paste it right in. And it opens this file up. Go ahead and use page down to get all the way to the bottom of the file. And you'll go down to the next line here, the include line here, include etc php myadmin apache conf, and you'll paste that in right here, and then you'll do control x to exit, and it'll ask you if you want to save the new data, just hit y for yes, and then it'll point to the file, and you'll just hit enter, because it's you're not renaming the file, you actually want to modify the file. So I'm going to hit control x, because I've already done this, there's no need to uh, for me to save it, but that's how you get to that. That's how you navigate through that. So control X. So that file has been configured. And uh, now we're just going to restart Apache. Uh, now that we've reconfigured Apache, we're going to restart it. Um, and then after that, this installation is basically done. OK, so uh, Apache has been restarted per our last command. Uh, you will you should have gotten an OK, the green OK back, um, telling you that, uh, that Apache restarted OK. 
and um, now we'll go back to the web page that we started from the beginning the IP address of the Raspberry Pi slash PHP my admin um, no dot PHP on that and we'll go ahead and load the page and sure enough PHP my admin comes up and uh, just to show you uh, we entered the new username and password test and test and we'll go ahead and uh, well first I'll give a bad one so you can see that it doesn't accept the login okay doesn't like that right and then we'll go add test and test like we did in the creation of it and you'll see that we logged into PHP my admin and now we can look at databases SQL statements, the status of things, export, import, change settings, all sorts of stuff from here. Um, so this is a very handy way to manipulate uh, MySQL and the database. One last little tip to help tie all these concepts together um, for people who aren't familiar with web servers and that sort of thing is we went through and we installed and configured the LAMP server. Uh, this is a Linux-based Apache MySQL PHP server uh, which is capable of doing many other things as well um, and we just came through and we tested it we made sure we got the PHP page to load we we're able to log in with our test account just to review and uh, just to just to make the point if uh, if we were to take this address off and just go to the point to the root address of the Raspberry Pi now with a web browser you'll notice we get the Apache 2 Debian default page I just want to point out uh, how things correspond here a little bit. By default, you'll you'll end up in the home slash pi directory, and if you do an ls or list, it'll show you all the files that are in that directory. Uh, in order to access the directory where web pages or PHP pages would be served out from, you go cd var www and then you can list the contents of that directory and you'll notice there's an HTML directory and an index.php file. If we follow that down and we go to the HTML directory in there and we list the contents, you'll notice there's an index.html file. This index.html file is exactly what you're seeing represented in your web browser in the form of an HTML file. Basically these are text files uh, under a certain language uh, written to be displayed through a web page. Um, anyway, I just wanted to correspond how that ties together for you and um, and help you understand a little bit better how these different uh, sort of seemingly abstract pieces fit together and operate as a system. So that concludes part six in the series on how to set up a Raspberry Pi to monitor a greenhouse or some other building and collect that data to a database and display it on a web page. Uh, tune in next time for part seven. Thanks for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network.